Welcome home, neighbors. Welcome home, neighbors. Hello, neighbors. We're listening from Arizona, Florida, Maryland, New York, New Jersey, Minneapolis, California, Utah, Michigan, Michigan, Iowa, Massachusetts, Georgia, Canada. Our home resort is Animal Kingdom, Polynesian, Bay Lake Town, Old Key West, Lovia, Corbaugh, Kalani Resort, Hilton, Boulder Ridge, Copper Creek, Grand Floridian, Saratoga Springs, Beach Club, and Wilderness Lodge. And you're listening to And you're listening You're listening to my, 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 Well, welcome home, everybody, to episode 94 of the Community Hall Live podcast. My name is Chad Pennycuff, and I am going to be your host tonight for this conversation about DVC point borrowing. And before we get into today's show, I want to do a huge shout out of thanks to our sponsor, DVC Rental Store, and DVC Resale Market, and Monera Financial, collectively known as World of Disney. Tonight, we're doing a focus on World of DVC and DVC Resale Market. So if you're in the, if add-on-itis has you and you just got to add some more points on because family situation has grown, life situation have changed, or you got a taste of a one and two bedroom and now you have to, there's just no going back to a studio. DVC Resale Market, they are the world's leader in DVC resales. And also as well, if all of these recent changes and Bob Chapek and everybody calling us annual pass holders unfavorable people in the parks has kind of got to you and you've lost that. Un you've just lost some of the magic. Maybe it's time to transition that magic to another family. They can help find you a buyer for your contract. They are the world's leader. They sell more than anybody else. Every single person there is a former Disney direct guide, which means you can get that same Disney level experience buying or selling without having to pay the Disney price tag. So dbcresellmarket.com, let them know you heard about them here on the My DVC Points platform. And let's jump into today's show. I'm going to welcome back our normal producer and normal backstage, who's going to be joining us on stage, Miss Gina Grotsky. Welcome, Hi, Gina. Hi, I'm so excited to talk about borrowing restrictions being lifted. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's one of those nuts and bolts things, okay? Like, it came out of the clear blue in COVID, and... Yeah, That's, let's. I'm well, ready to dive in and find out what's going on with the. Uh, yeah, challenge. yeah. And <laughs> I'm going to welcome Ron to the show and then I'll just kind of do a little bit of a recap here. So, and let's welcome back a regular contributor, great friend of the show, Mr. Ron Shamert. How are you doing today, Ron? I'm doing great, Chad. How are you guys doing today? Gina, I'm glad you're ready for your close up. <laughs> I am. I'm here. The surprise. Surprise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So today we are talking about the borrowing restrictions that, that came in via COVID. And immediately when they opened back up, DVC came back in and said, OK, we're going to reopen back up, but we're going to limit you guys from borrowing no more than 50 percent of your points just to complete a stay. That's it. OK, no more of this 100 percent borrowing over due to COVID because so many people had banked up points. They did have an excess. My original issue with that was they implemented it right when the parks opened up in the beginning of the pandemic and the resorts were empty. Okay. You should have been letting everybody borrow two, 300% of their points. Okay. To come back in and fill those resorts at that time, if they were willing to travel to Walt Disney world, but alas, it wasn't until sometime in June, like of June of 2022, that we actually had the borrowing restrictions removed and in today's show, we're talking about those borrowing restrictions and what was the impact to your family. So, Gina, we've got some some three three basic questions to go over tonight. So, my number one question is: How many of you guys ended up having to buy more points because of the borrowing restrictions? <laughs> That'd be me. <laughs> so, if you did, leave a comment. We'll get to it. So, so Gina, you added on because you couldn't borrow. Exactly. So I only had 75 points to start. We went to uh, Magic or went to, where did we stay? I can't remember. We went to Old Key West and Boulder Ridge back in 2020. And I said, I need more points so we can go to Alani. So I ended up buying more points at Old Key West. And so I could go to Alani. It, so it worked out. And that, and I could only borrow 50%. So I had to use my, the ones that I got from the developer points plus my points for the year. So. Yeah, so you bought into Copper Creek back when it was mm -hmm. a 75% minimum, right? Yeah. So I'm going to say, okay, well, you kind of underbought at the time. like Right. 
But you but, got your feet wet, okay? Right. And I couldn't go to Alani, so I had to buy enough points so I could go to Alani, and I had to be able to use the points that they banked plus the current ones. And it got us a, it got us a one bedroom for five nights. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Alani is not cheap on the point. No, counts. it's not cheap mm-hmm. points. So yes, I had to buy more points because of the borrowing limits. What about you, Ron? Uh, I, I am also guilty of that. I had a, uh, a whirlwind <laughs> whirlwind trip that I had planned for uh, anniversary week that Chad and I had a nice discussion about some time back. And uh, yeah, that was not going to happen without purchasing more points, begging for more points, borrowing more points. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, guilty. Guilty as charged. Uh, uh, but subsequently, I now have turned those contracts over and kind of flipped them into new new points. So, um, yeah, it it certainly wasn't ideal to have to go out there and, and put the put the money out, but uh, well worth it in the long run. As we all know, uh, DVC points are, are never going to be a bad decision if you're yeah. if you're still yeah. wanting to go. So, Gina, you bought direct for yours. Ron, yeah. you bought resale for yours. I right? did. Which makes it a little easier to come back in later and just sell them back on resale, right. and and right. you probably didn't probably didn't lose much because it probably went up some during the pandemic, right? Yeah, quite honestly. So I bought some resale, and then I did buy uh, fifty points uh, at Vero uh, uh, Direct, and which I still own. I still have that direct contract as well. But I, I, I yeah, I made. I made a pretty good amount on my Saratoga contract from when I purchased and and when I got rid of it. So That's awesome. yeah. and the Vero. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, capital gains is, is a DVC members. It, it's in our life, right? People say this is an it investment is. and I'm like, well, okay. My capital gains tax tells me otherwise. <laughs> right? yeah, t- tell that to my 1099 that's coming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No kidding. Cause I mean, I sold over a thousand points during the pandemic mm. in order to transition into a, a 365 day for real home down there. Right. right. And so yeah, I'm I'm well versed in that capital gains tax and and all that came in in it. So I'm a little odd in the fact that I was downsizing through all of this. Right, you so didn't it, buy more points, but you bought a house, right. so that kind of counts. Yeah, I have 365 <laughs> days availability, <laughs> and it is kind. literally <laughs> on the edge of the bubble. Okay, the bubble yeah. is in the backyard. Like yeah. you, you yeah. can watch the fireworks, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there, yeah. that counts. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, yeah, I haven't seen the booking calendar for that for those reservations, <laughs> Chad, on the My DVC Points community. All I'm Web telling page, you is uh, the four weeks in the bungalows is, is looking pretty cheap. Um, okay, when I publish uh, the point charts, it, it'll be up there. It'll be up there, right? It'll yeah. definitely Grand be up there. Yeah. Grand but okay, I'm wondering if anybody else that's tuning in live did did you end up buying more points because of this, and and what was the impact to you because of it, and. So we'll also move on to our next question as well. And then did you change your booking habits? So Gina, what happened with your booking habits in this time? Did it, do you think the borrowing limit impacted you? Did it, did it not? Well, in this time I ended up having friends buy more points. So that actually helped me in the booking because they would just buy, they bought more points and they had more in their kitty. So we just used their points while mine were sitting pretty. So while yours are recovering from Alani, you talk yes. to travel buddies into buying more points. Yes. So you burn down their points. Right. And now we're still booking the same amount. Even we're booking more because they have more points and, you know, incentives and, you know, um, blue card. You want that blue card. So you have to buy those more, the, buy the more points, which is yeah, fabulous for me. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah. Because Vicky bought more points that you travel with. Shannon bought more points that you travel with. Like. Yep. There you go. (laughs) So yeah, they bought more points. That's how that went down. So they bought more points. So our our habits did not change. They actually got, we increased our number of times going. Okay. So you, yeah. Yeah. So your booking habits did change because your friends bought more points. So that you could, you ended up up going more nights on points. Yeah. Ron, what about you? What, what, what changed in your booking habits here? Like, uh, well, when the restrictions were on, uh, obviously there wasn't as much that we could book with the uh, with the uh, borrowing being restricted. But uh, I I think I've shared this before. But there's no such thing as renting points. There's no such thing as points left over. Uh, I kind of funny. I actually enjoyed having the restrictions in place because it kind of protected me from myself in some instances where. You know, all of a sudden you're going to be going and well, now 22's points are gone. 23's are gone. That's all right. In October of 23, I could just borrow all of 24. You know, I, I feel like until I add again, 
it's going to be that constantly chasing that following year. Uh, always until, be borrowing. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm an I'm a, I'm an ABB. Always be borrowing. Yep. I think I'm. Always <laughs> borrowing. You know, I used to kind of. I'm not gonna lie. I used to kind of like maybe be a little judgmental and look down on people that couldn't manage it and always kept behind the eight ball that way. And then I talked to Sue over at DVC rental store and she had this brilliant way of looking at it. Now Sue's like retired from Disney and now working for DVC rental store. And so Sue was like, Hey, it's like this. One of these days I ain't going to be on this planet. Right. But because I'm borrowing all of these points, I snuck an extra vacation in. (laughs) Exactly. Like, my errors can deal with the lack of no points. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I use them. That's fabulous. I love yeah. her. Sorry, I used I used your you know my points and, and stole a vacation from you that you're paying the dues on because now you got the contract. But I think that's a, I think a future out of the deal. I think right? that's a future story time subject for Sue. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Definitely. That should be that we should do a a highlight with Sue there to just come back in and explain her position on point yes. borrowing here because I I think it's. Kind of worthy and and, and note noteworthy and it needs to happen here. And so I can honestly say I didn't really change much of my booking habits. What I've started to do is I've started to book more studios. And but it comes from the fact that I don't have to have a washer and dryer in Walt Disney World. And it also comes from the fact that you know this summer I completed out my stay of all DVC resorts. So we knocked Vero Beach off the list. And now I'm kind of like going, okay, let me rent some points out to cover these dues. And for when I want to be on property, all five of us can sneak into a studio for a couple of days. Or I'll book all five of us into a studio, but maybe two or three of them will actually stay there. And some of them will stay at the house 15 minutes away. Okay. So that's what changed with me. I quit booking the bigger rooms so that I could rent more points and then kind of get my dues covered. and. Right now, my goal is to rent enough points to be able to just pay the dues because my contracts are all paid off. So mm-hmm. that'd be like free membership at that point in time. Nice. And I typically strategically book for Moonlight Magic dates mm-hmm. and I strategically book for things along those lines. So, yeah, that's that's kind of interesting. And, and picking up on this, Frank says that they did buy VGF and Animal Kingdom during the borrowing restriction time. Yeah, so, you need to go. You needed more points to stay in that room. I, I feel you. I get it. And those initial incentives on Grand Flow were just mm-hmm. like super, 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 super hard to pass up. Yeah. Right. And but Kathy here is saying she goes, I try to plan so I don't borrow. So we'll do a f- five or six day stays in order to conserve points mm-hmm. and kind of live within the the current allocation. Right. And then Tommy says that uh, he didn't change his habits, but it opened up possibilities and started making more plans. Oh, good. So, okay. It sounds like you got a little bit more mindful in how you use your points Mm -hmm. to kind of come back in and say, Hey, look, now that I know I can't borrow, maybe I better like tune this up a little bit and be a little tighter. Right. Mm Mm-hmm. And then Vicky said, also, the DVC annual pass is now Sorcerer, which has more days than you could go with the old gold AP. And that allows us to go more to Walt Disney World. It does. It does. <laughs> I mean, that spring break lift was a game changer. Right. 100%. And I went. I went during that spring break. Yeah. If mm-hmm. you're not trying to sneak down there for Thanksgiving, which was the new restriction on that, mm-hmm. then then you came out ahead on those, those mm-hmm. new passes. I feel sorry for the people that were Thanksgiving only. Oh, yeah. And and that was their core time. So Frank says, uh, seems like borrowing a little from the next year protects you from expiring points. Mm-hmm. And he goes, it's hard to nail a reservation at the exact number of yearly points. It's better to borrow than to bank a few points, in my humble opinion. And he wants to know our thoughts on the matter. Love it. Love it. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm all about borrowing. Yeah. I'm all about so, borrowing. So you're a borrower, right? You're a borrower, Ron? Yeah. Borrower. Borrower. I'm actually, I actually like banking. Okay. And and here's the reason why, because I know I can like bank my poly points and then I have the flexibility to use them in advance, or I have the flexibility to rent them in advance and I can play it either way. I just know that I'm not going to blow the points. Okay. 
that's that's just kind of the the story because I am super 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 tempted to keep stalking the website and finding a, a weekend opening at club level and just booking oh, yeah. the room just to knock it off my list because it's still on my list. There's still things at Walt Disney World I want to do, right? And I know they won't be a great use of points. Yeah, and I'll do that once I get my tower built. I can do I can have more flexibility in banking because I'll I don't need to stay there all the time. But because I live so far away from Disney World, I have to be borrowing those points. And then when I buy Alani, I'll only be borrowing. I'll, I'll never be borrowing. I'll be banking and using for that. Got it. Got it. So I, I And I'll jump in real quick. The reason I think I'm such a borrower right now is I, I'd still consider us as newer DVC members. We're still in that honeymoon phase where oh, we yeah. just want to go, go, go. And I know I realize that eventually it will slow down. I mean, not that the luster is going to wear off, but we certainly won't feel the need to go as often as we're going right now. So I, I know we'll come back around where I'm going to be a little bit more point responsible in the future. Or just buy more. <laughs> or maybe yeah. not because yeah. your grandbaby is going to yeah. love it and you want to bring her more. You know, it's a whole cycle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And also, Ron, you know, you're still in the unfavorable stage of using your annual pass and trying to get the most value out of your annual pass. And the only way you get more yep. value out of your annual pass is, is to, to go keep more. Going. To go. Like, is to go. <laughs> and Otherwise, they really need to they really need to classify. We talked about this a little bit. You got to classify annual pass favorable versus unfavorable. Locals like yourself, yeah, maybe that's a little bit less favorable, but you still spend a ton of money. Gina, you do. Chad, I know you do. Uh, <laughs> like, we were talking about spending thousands and thousands in a year that was my october 1st bill so it's a, so uh the out of state oh. annual pass holders i think you know they really need to consider those into the equation yeah and i mean am i really that unfavorable as a guest when i roll into the park at seven o'clock at night okay i finish my work day no. i cook a meal at home i go to the park i meet a few people i have a couple of drinks i grab a snack or two and i come home like, is that really that unfavorable? Am I really taking away key resources from the park with that kind of a lifestyle? I don't think so. Because a lot of times those day guests have come and gone. Yeah. And they don't so, buy the popcorn buckets every single time. Right. They don't buy the sippers every single time. They don't buy the new Hocus Pocus spirit jersey every single time. <laughs> <laughs> you drop a cool popcorn bucket, I'm there. I, I ain't yeah. going to lie. Okay. As unfavorable attendees are. As yeah, yeah, and uh, <laughs> well, now yeah. and I'll add to that, Chad. A lot of times, you're you're drawing, and Gina, you as well, you're drawing people to the park because they want to go, and if that's where you're going to meet them, mm -hmm. you're bringing those more favorable people in more often. So, yeah, yeah that's true. It's it's that that's very 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 true. It's not only mention all the publicity that we do as unfavorable media influencers. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like. <laughs> Uh, uh, it's just to sigh. <laughs> thank God yeah. the stock's up 35%. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank God. Okay. We, we, we do have that to look forward to, but yeah. anyways, uh, back to our question here tonight. And Caleb was saying because of the borrowing restrictions, he was able to book an impromptu one night at Polly before his cruise last week. Nice. So that really worked out in his favor. Whereas before he didn't have the points. So I get it. And then Vicky says, uh, Caleb, me too, is able to, to book two nights at BLT before their cruise. And I benefited from those points. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I remember seeing that in my MBA. I was yes. like, Ooh, they're a Bay Lake Tower and I'm home in Detroit. Like, this is not right. <laughs> um, and then Janice is saying that we're big on borrowing. So they're, they're huge people there. And she says, we live in Virginia. And have annual passes, so we try to go three or four times exactly. a year. I bet you eat at all the restaurants. I bet you do everything else. So, yeah, this this unfavorable comments kind of going over like a lead balloon, Bob. <laughs> this guy, this yeah, guy. <laughs> I'm telling you, like the only thing I can say is our stock is up, Ron. So <laughs> that's good. I news mean, yeah, on that. All right, and our last question is do you find it harder or easier to make reservations now? And I, I'll, I'll lead this one and I'm going, I don't really care, okay? Because I'm just like sprinkling in points last minute now. 
it, it doesn't really impact me at, at all. The only time I will like get on the horn to book something at Walt Disney World isn't at Walt Disney World. It's at Alani. It's at Hilton Head because I have not taken my family to Hilton Head yet. Oh, so yeah. that's still a bucket list trip to go in the summer. And that's going to be hard to book. But it's not going to change anything because that was always hard to book in the summer. Mm -hmm. So I don't see any kind of an impact here. Right. It, 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 it's not, it's not phasing me one way or the other. So Gina, what, what's your thoughts? Is it harder or easier for you to make reservations now with that? It, it didn't seem any different really. Um, when we went to Bay Lake tower, she went on there, looked, we had the wait list come through and we literally booked that maybe two weeks, three weeks in advance. Like it was last minute. Okay. And the wait list came through like a week ahead. And then for, I, you know, I'm going over New Year's, so of course it's harder to get a reservation. Like, so it's the same thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Ron. Yeah. You know, and uh, you guys both know, we, we tend to book bigger rooms when we come because we're coming with people. So I did notice once the restriction was, uh, was removed, some of those larger rooms where there was massive availability, some of that availability was taken up. But other than that, like like you guys alluded to, studios are just if it's a popular time at a popular resort, they're always difficult. Yeah. To so that that's just a no brainer. Uh, but I did notice a little bit of an uptick in the in the larger rooms. Uh, and maybe that's because now people have the points accessible. Uh, I added I added a couple days to my trip just because those became available for the uh, March trip. So that was helpful for me. Um, but in terms of reservations. Yeah, I, I think only in the in the larger um, units that that I saw. Yeah, it's so it, it sounds like the bigger units that require more points, therefore more borrowing, kind of felt a little bit of uh, the impact here. Like people started borrowing more and, and booking those, which makes complete sense to me. But they probably couldn't for the studios because they were probably already booked up anyways. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So the low end probably not much of a, a deal. It's chaos as normal. The high end, right. probably a little tighter. Yeah, that makes sense. Because I, I remember a lot of times through the pandemic, people were looking at the, the bungalows and looking at the grand villas and going, hey, I got all these bank points. I need to just blow them out. Mm -hmm. And so they were, they were blowing them on those big rooms. But Mary Tracy says, the positive of the restrictions for me was helpful for me to save points for my trips instead instead of impulsively spending them all. And yeah, Marianne's a big Saratoga fan and she will come back in and just, oh, Saratoga is available as usual, <laughs> right? And just, she gets a little bit larger rooms, one bedrooms, two bedrooms there, and she didn't have a problem booking them. So she's just yeah, all in. I get it. I get it. So now you're going to have to have a little bit more di discipline here, Marianne. Yeah, but I think you can handle it. And Janice was saying um, uh, they haven't had any problem booking. And Janice, okay. what size rooms do you book there, right? And Frank was saying harder. I thought during the early shutdown, they should have kept the 100% borrowing to burn through a lot of points mm -hmm. for early people who were willing to travel. Yeah. And I couldn't agree with you even Yeah, I agree more. too. thousand percent right? agree. Yeah. And the dirty pool side of that is it's 60 days. If those rooms aren't filled, DVC was keeping their cash resorts mm -hmm. closed. Mm -hmm. So a hundred percent of the visitors to Walt Disney World during reopening were coming into DVC rooms. They were getting free upgrades to DVC rooms because DVC people weren't using them. They were contractually bound to keep the timeshares open. So they Disney drove a Mack truck through that breakage loop loophole. In the same point in time, they kept members from borrowing that could have wanted to use their own right. rooms that mm. they paid for. That's where I think they, they could be onto a little shaky ground on this if this ever comes up for a, a review. But yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, Frank. And then Caleb saw, he says, I saw a few things get booked up a little bit more at seven to 11 months out. And then okay. Mary says, I haven't seen anything different from pre COVID. Okay. Now it seems to be back at the pre-COVID levels for reservations. And yeah, Marianne's also trying to book Saratoga primarily. She's we, we got we've got her to play a little bit at boardwalk and test the waters out. <laughs> she did and she did Old Key West. And she did Old Key West as well. Yeah. 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 We definitely we, we met up with her at Old Key West. Mm -hmm. 
And so Janice is saying um, this past April, we were able to get Grand, Grand Californian for three nights. Wow. And you didn't have to wait list. We wait listed and never got it, anything. And that was for March. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's kind of unusual. I mean, unless you're, you're talking about a two bedroom or a one bedroom at Grand Cal, then you can typically find those at seven months. A lot. They're a lot easier to find. I'll put it to you that way. Okay. And it must be during the week because yeah. there's never a weekend. And then Mary's also saying it's also not available for all my in, impulsive need oh, power to power line at Mickey's not so scary. Uh, not a room to be found. So, no. Thanks. Just stalk the site. <laughs> stalk it. Yep. <laughs> be the yep. crazy stalker. And then Janice is saying that she was indeed trying to book one and two bedrooms and it had been harder for the studio. Okay. So yeah, I think we're caught up with the comments here as well. So uh, any other open comments or questions tonight? Because we're kind of a, a little bit of a shorter show to, to talk about borrowing restrictions and the impacts. I am 100% glad that they are back and we can now borrow like we used to. We could bank and borrow because one of the things that did impact me through this was going into the pandemic. I had six home resorts and it was very common for me to bank 100% of my points for one resort and mm -hmm. borrow 100% from the other resort so that I could leverage the 11-month booking window every single time. Mm -hmm. And with the borrowing restrictions, that shot that strategy straight in the foot. Like, <laughs> it, it, And I remember in January pre-shutdown, sitting in a sales pitch at the Riviera where the rep is explaining this strategy to people, saying, hey, look, you need to buy another at least half your ideal vacation over here at Riviera so you can bank and borrow and have two 11 months to just do everything. And I'm like, yeah, that's a pretty good strategy. It's legit. You're not just like creating sales puff here. <laughs> and then the restrictions hit and that strategy just got smacked down, mm -hmm. shut down like mm -hmm. hard. Okay. Yeah. And then people aren't going to buy when they can't, they're not going to buy as many points because they can't borrow. So, but now, yeah. now I was thinking about this with Alani I only want to be in a one bedroom. I want an ocean view, but that's 300 points. So you buy a hundred and yeah, bank borrow, <laughs> bank borrow use. And that's your three years plan. Yeah. That's your every three year plan for a yeah. And that's, that's, that's glorious. Yeah. So, and that, Frank asked a really good operational question here. He goes, who's got the best spreadsheet to keep track of borrowing and banking over multiple contracts? Oh, good question. Not, the best not me. <laughs> yeah, the best tool that I have seen there is the guys over at DVC Help. It's ran by Skier Pete from our DVC newscast. And he's got a, a brilliant coder named Steve behind him. And those guys are really good nerds. And they have a whole website back end that'll help you bank borrow and track this and plan for multiple contracts and all of that levels of craziness. When I did the research on that and I looked into it, I was like, there is such a small percentage of DVC members that are like nerdy like that. It really wasn't worth my time to develop a tool for it. And then when I figured out that they had put all the effort into it and they've started to realize, yeah, it's one of the underutilized areas of our site. I was like, well, yeah, I'm glad I didn't build it then. Um, but so there you go, <laughs> but you've got a really great resource there for it. Okay. Cause there are people that really want to come in and nerd out on all of that. And I look at it like I was adjusting my vacations when we were hundred percent Detroit base because we would go in the summer when Laura wasn't teaching. And so I might start on a Tuesday. I might start on a Friday. I might start on a Sunday. It would be whatever I could line up cheap flights yeah. with room availability. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if like, we really wanted the seven month beach club, we would keep waiting and just push back our vacation until we got it. Okay. We weren't just like set in stone. This is when we're going to go. So to me, it didn't really make any sense to try to plan and manage and track all of my points like that. When I've got so many points and contracts in the air and everything else. And I was so flexible. I was like, I'll just wait to get what I want. And it could be more weekend days. It could be more weekdays. It could be pushing us back into early, you know, this time in August. Because about August 15th, so like tomorrow, 
15th, 16th, the point charts took a dive in summer. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, because everyone go back. We go back to work. Everyone goes back to school. Because, yeah, all the southern states are back in school. The northern states typically don't go back to Labor Day. Mm-hmm. And so Disney was dropping the point charts down the last couple of weeks of August to draw people in. So I didn't know. And that's kind of why it led me to come into this and, and just look around and go, I don't see a lot of people doing that. So, But it's a great question. And it it really, truly is a phenomenal site and some really great people over at DVC Help that will uh, help you put all that together. So I do a huge plug for uh, Pete and the team over there as well. And so I think that's it. I think we've kind of caught up on our comments for tonight. So I want to do a huge shout out of thank you to our sponsors, DVC Resale Market, DVC Rental Store, and Monera Financial, the whole team over at World of Disney. If you're looking to buy, if you're looking to sell, if you're looking to finance a contract or even refinance a contract, or you're like me and you're looking to cover your dues by renting some of your points. So they've got the complete team over there to help you out. Worldofdvc.com, dvcresalemarket.com, dvcrentalstore.com. So that's all. That's it for our show tonight. And I got to throw this one last comment in from Nick because it made me smile. He says, I gladly pay you on Tuesday for a hamburger today. Wimpy, the original champion of borrowing. Absolutely, so, Nick. Absolutely. Oh, man. Good <laughs> yes. stuff. Yes, yes. And you know what? I, I got to go over to the other park and see if Wimpy is in the uh, Popeye ride over there. It's a water ride, so I have not done it. But I will get back with you, Nick, to see if I can come <laughs> back in and, and do a photo over there with our buddy Wimpy, the original champion of borrowing. So. <laughs> That's great. That's all we've got for tonight. Thanks, Oops. folks. Oops. Yeah. Ah, you and I can it. fight me. Yourself. You take it <laughs> off. Right? It's done. Okay. Okay. So I'll tell you what, Gina, you go ahead and roll the end video. I can and do that. we will see you guys all next Sunday night. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. Have a glorious week. And hopefully you learned something about your members tonight that'll help you go out there and plan something magical in your vacations. Night. Good night. Good night. Good night.